My name is Lauren Hope. I am the CEO of Moving On TV, the positive TV channel that gives you hope. I just got back from a week's tour with the Maasai, with Chief Joseph and John and uh, Ginny and Ron Bartol, giving and giving from the heart. I experienced song and humour and dance. I even got to sing myself and I loved every minute of it. And so I'm making this film to touch your hearts the same way that the Maasai touched mine. And I hope that you can reach inside into your hearts and do anything possible to help them with this incredible journey. Enjoy the film. Namaste. Beautiful ancient culture. And the people live today much as they did back then. Beautiful land, beautiful people, beautiful traditions. Inspired. Um, Chief Joseph, how many years have you been coming to Port Jeff now? Five. Okay, for the last five years, Chief Joseph and John Kileni Ole Parsito is his community developer, and these gentlemen have been coming here to Port Jeff for the last five years for two reasons. Number one, they travel through Suffolk County and sometimes Nassau County um, to educate, to share their traditions to tell people what their culture is like. And you know, the more we know about each other, the more the world comes together and the more unity there is. We need more togetherness in the world. So we, it's nice to know about the Maasai culture. As I was saying before, so many beautiful traditions, some that may need changing. The 21st century has been hard times for the Maasai and uh, there are some changes that need to be made for them to assimilate. So <clears throat> that's the main purpose, or one of the purposes of the Chief's visit every year. He travels throughout the U.S. This is just the beginning of the tour. So number one, he comes to educate. And number two, he also comes to fundraise because Many of the traditions um, are beautiful and some of them not so beautiful. First of all, there is a great deal of poverty in the area. This year has been particularly hard with uh, drought, uh, famine. There's been a very, very hard time getting food and water to the people and also to the cattle. So he needs to fundraise for that. Uh, I think the basic three for any civilized, any people at all, are number one, safety, number two, health, and then number three, education. My names are Chief Joseph Oletipango, and I'm quite glad that today I am able to meet you. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, I bring you greetings from all the way from my village in East Africa, Kenya, and especially from my tribal group of people called the Maasai people of Kenya. I am a, their cultural ambassador when I'm visiting here in the, the United States. Uh, and as you have been told by Chidi, we are on a mission whereby we visit schools and even churches and other... <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. So that's how it looks like. And community we have our roles defined along gender lines and we have the roles for men and roles for women. Some of the roles for the men in the Maasai community 
includes uh, the men are the breadwinners. So they are the ones who provide for food, for medical care, and for security in the community. They are the ones who look after the livestock, which is the main source of livelihood. And they are the ones who migrate with the livestock whenever it comes to the dry periods. They are the ones who protect the animals against wild animals. And they are the ones who provide for medical care or health care to the livestock as well whenever there are diseases or outbreaks. Uh, if to the women, the women are the ones who take care of the children. They collect firewood. They collect, uh, they, they, they cook food and also they fetch water. Traditionally, our houses are made of twigs, uh, ash, cow dung mixed with soil, and it is the responsibility of the Maasai women to make traditional huts, so, which are small houses. So uh, those are some of the roles that the women and the men play in the Maasai society. As a community, we pass knowledge from one generation to another through an informal way of learning. So for you to learn about the traditions and the cultures of the Maasai community, you do not have to send a kid to school. <coughs> that is knowledge which is very informal and it is passed from one generation to another. It is the responsibility of the mother to teach their girl and it is the responsibility of the father to teach the boy the roles of both boys and girls in the community. So our roles and our way of life is passed through an informal way. As a community, we have our own rites of passage, which are just like the different levels of education, or formal education that uh, children go through, which starts right from childhood, then to boyhood and girlhood, then from uh, boyhood and girlhood, you go to, uh, to the youth, which is the period whereby the boys uh, graduate to become warriors uh, after initiation of both boys and girls. The warriors in the Maasai community are always between the age of 18 and 24. And at that point, the youth are being taken to be the community defense system or the community military. And they're the ones who are supposed to protect the, com the community against uh, invasions and they're the ones who are supposed to go uh, sometimes to, uh, to fight with the enemies. Ornaments, and our women put a lot of jewel, so a lady can have, you know, more. Probably be giving you their regular annual spiel about come on down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely here, please, you know, come visit. They do have a beautiful guest house, I want you to know. They have a guest house and they're happy to put people up and show you around and... Um, a lot of giraffes. Oh, a lot of giraffes. That's their, that is their backyard. You go out, outside the house. I've never seen herds of giraffes before visiting there. And just running. I've never seen giraffes run. I've seen them in the zoo and they stand there, you know. Yes, yes. They run in the, in the herds and they just, it's so beautiful. It's just so incredible. It's, it's such a beautiful country. Um, at night time, the night sky is just the most beautiful sky you could ever see. It's just, it goes on forever. I suppose it's because you don't have the, uh, the buildings and different lights coming from far away, but yes. that night sky is just gorgeous. But the, the invitation is there. I'm going to extend it on their behalf. And if you want to do the tourist thing, they'll hook you up with safaris. <laughs> and, you know, if you want to go out with some of the young men and hunt a lion, I'm uh, sure they uh, no. <laughs> Me? I'm supposed to hunt the lions. <laughs> no, we don't get to hunt the lions. Okay, the, men, okay. the men go, they get to have all the fun. Okay, we have to stay home and build the boma, remember? Uh -huh. <laughs> the women have to build the houses there, remember? Yes. <laughs> all right, well, uh, so the, the chief and, uh, and John are going to tell you a little bit about their year. Um, I'm going to report to you for them that it was not a good year. 
in the Sciland, the uh, the drought has you maybe you've read about it. The yes. drought has been absolutely horrible, absolutely horrible. And we do have some pictures, but um, we're we're not able to show those to you tonight. If you if you ever want more information about the Maasai or these particular uh, pictures of this year's drought, you can always go to my website, which is Leaving Footprints. Okay, it's easy to remember, leavingfootprints.org. And there's a Kenya page there, and uh, there's a gallery there that's got pictures. And you can see not only the people, um, also the livestock that have to actually be helped up because they're so weak. There's no grass. There's, there's been no, no rain. They, they haven't had a good rain in two years. They have, twice a year, they have their rainy season. I don't know what happens during that season these days, but um, anyway, I don't want to tell that story. That's for them to tell. Uh, visiting, last time when we were here, we went back to my village as servants. We went to serve. So, back in Africa, uh, my people are well, and uh, we are doing our uh, normal daily, daily lifestyles. And I was just thinking while I was uh, seated, that in Africa, on the other side of the globe, we have the droughts going on that side. We here on this side, you have the hurricanes. Yes. But above all, I was just thinking, the glory of God is above all of this world. If you will pretend to be brave on the battleground, uh -huh. you will die there. <laughs> <laughs> The first reason is that, to share the culture, because this is what will bring us all together. Um, learning how very much alike we all are, and then celebrating the differences between us. And the second reason the chief is here every year is to fundraise for his village. Um, he, for instance, I'm just going to say that uh, 50, uh, Fifty dollars pounds uh, buys a fifty-pound bag of rice to feed like thirty kids. You know, he, the American dollar goes a long way in this island. Is is pretty much my point here. And one of the amazing things that um, the chief is doing in his village is saving some of the young girls. You know, who are in danger of being married at a very young age and going through those tribal, those ancient tribal practices. My name is Naomi, I'm 12 years old. When I was 10 years old, my parents and my grandma wanted to circumcise me and be married over my They wanted to be rich in the Cows, goats, blankets, sugar in exchange of me. I ran to the I ran to the chief to be saved. I'm now in a boarding school. I'm safe. I'm worried of the other Maasai girls who have the same problems as me because of the bad Maasai culture. Um, are are there other chiefs like yourself that have the same beliefs about girls and women getting an education? Is this common for? leaders of clans to have that that belief or are you unique? I've, uh, I've met other chiefs and told me and uh, shared with them. Mm. So others are, be are catching up. Mm. Otherwise, they, because of illiteracy, they had also the cultural uh, perspective, way of looking things. But I've tried to talk to them and they are looking and seeing some sense. Mm. So that, that is just for the top. They have others inside. This is the Maasai wedding necklace. Today you are wedded. <laughs> so, so this is just part of the ladies' dress. Hi everyone. Welcome to Moving On To. And today I've got a very, very exciting surprise for you all. As you know, um, I've been to Port Jefferson and I've been filming the tour of the Maasai tribe. So today, I've actually got Chief Joseph here who's going to talk to us a little bit about the tour and a little bit about the Maasai tribe. So today I've got Chief Joseph with me 
and I'm just going to be chatting to him a little bit about the tour and finding out how much we can do with Moving On TV or people that are going to be watching this, what can we do to help him to move on and all sorts of other little things like for example about the, the, um, the stick. <laughs> Uh, he's going to explain it to us because I remember you saying something about col the colours and everything. But to start off with, how, how are you feeling today, Chief Joseph? Yeah, I'm feeling fine and also uh, relaxed and excited about our programmes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, down here in New York or Jefferson. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So, how do you feel the tour has been going? Yeah, the tour, uh, since we came, has started very well. On a high note, we have met a lot of people and even come to know you mm -hmm. and the programs that you do with the TV station. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. So t uh, tell us a little bit about what, how it started. Where have you been this tour? Where have you gone to? What have you done? Yeah, um, my name is Chief Joseph Oletipango from East Africa, Kenya. And I come from a tribal group of people called the Maasai people of Kenya who are a nomadic pastoralist group, that means we keep cows, goats and sheep. And when I was appointed to be the chief of the people, uh, when I was 18 years old, I was entrusted the mantle or the mandate of leadership uh, of my people. Sorry, uh, can I stop you there? Because that's a really, I had a question about that. Yeah. When you say you became the chief of the people, mm -hmm. were you voted in or was this something you inherited from your family in some way? Okay, I, when I talk about being a chief, I am talking about a traditional chief. So, there is no election, like where we have uh, today in the modern world, where we go to the voting, and say maybe uh, some sacred ballots or something like that. But I was chosen in a traditional way where I was appointed among uh, a group to be the leader of the people. Okay, okay, that's, that's fascinating. So what are your responsibilities then as the chief of the Maasai village? One is that I officiate the traditional initiation ceremonies of the youth and also during when they have these uh, ceremonies I participate in them, I give them guidance and counselling on how young men will grow to be responsible men in the society. And also I try to maintain peace by trying to solve uh, the disputes among the community members that occur or that or that arises and also try to sit with the council of elders to try and determine maybe the punishment award that is given to the wrongdoers. I try also to facilitate some of the community development activities at the village and also link the central government with the local people at the village level. Okay, so you've got a lot of responsibility. Oh yeah, that's a leader, <laughs> that's a leader. Yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so coming back to the tour and the whole objective of your tour, can you explain to us a little bit what is the objective of the tour that you do? Yeah, from my village, traveling uh, to the US and even to the UK, uh, we travel probably mainly for one or two objectives. One is to try and share more about the Maasai lifestyle and culture, to give people an opportunity to come understand the diverse cultures of the world for a peaceful uh, global world. So that's one. Number two is that we try to make connections uh, uh, for our people and communities, for, for our people, poor communities back in Africa where we try to do fundraisings to be able to support the needs of our community, like the education for our school girls, uh, the education, uh, uh, building of schools, maybe, and uh, also for the women economic empowerment program so that we can give the women a voice in our society. Sure. Yeah. Now, a big part of your work is done to support young girls that um, are being taken into marriage at a very, very young age. 
and so you do a lot of work that you actually a lot of the girls st have started to run to you like a refuge and you where basically they know you're going to protect them in some way and you you're offering now a sponsorship program mm -hmm. where people can sponsor a girl and that girl will get educated and will not have to be married at such a young age. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, let me say that in the Maasai community, we have good values in life and we have also, we have also bad uh, traditions and cultural practices that we think they are harmful to the health and to the lives of our women. Mm. And one, some of these bad cultural and traditional practices are one, like early girl child marriage. So like a girl of between 12 to 16 years old can be married off to a, an elderly man or maybe an old man of 40 years and above who this girl has never met in life. So uh, the early girl child marriage, uh, it denies the girl an opportunity to education. So another thing is that another bad cultural practice is female genital mutilation or female genital uh, circumcision. So uh, our, our, the Maasai girls, when they undergo this practice, uh, it has a lot of health implications because during childbirth, there is a lot of uh, complaints from the women. They bleed a lot. They cannot walk long distance to fetch water for the domestic family use. The, there is also a lot of uh, uh, contamination or a lot of, um, there is a lot of diseases that occur as a result of that. So we try to stop that. Um, and also there is uh, polygamy uh, whereby an, a Maasai girl is treated as an asset to earn family dowry. So we are trying to stop all this. So that, and this is through when we try to stop, we rescue these girls and we try to give them an opportunity uh, uh, to go to school okay, by so offering a scholarship mm. program uh, yes. whereby we can put these girls to a boarding school to save them so that they can have a bright future. It's fantastic. So, you're very enlightened. So, you're very enlightened, and you're, you're basically brave enough to say that you want to go out there and change it. So have you had a lot of opposition from, would you say, the old Maasai? The, uh, do they give you a lot of opposition? Because, as I say, this has like, been going on for a long time, but you know in your heart that you don't want it to go on anymore and, and you put so much energy into it. So it's very interesting to know what is it that you must have a lot to work against. Yeah, uh, you have to know that this is a, tr a tradition or, not, or a cultural practice that has been going on for ages or for years. And I have been facing some opposition here and there, especially among the elderly parents, because it is something that they, they think that we are going against the tradition uh, norms. And the, the parents also would like to trade their girls uh, for, uh, in exchange for getting dowry or in form of cows. So they want to increase their hearts by uh, giving off their girls for marriage. So we try to come to the rescue of these girls in, by trying to, if these girls come strongly to us, that they need, real, they need education, they need to go to school, that is when we chip in and stand with these girls and this is whereby now we can appeal and talk to well-wishers or even to the international community whereby we can request for individual sponsorship to enable these girls to go to school mm -hmm. to save and to protect them. Okay, so you came up with all of this and has it been a long difficult journey for you to get the support of the elders to help you in some way? Okay, uh, yeah, the, uh, it has come a long way because t since 2003, uh, when I began the, this initiative with some of my village mates uh, of the girls, of starting a girls education program, which can help these g needy girls uh, excel to greater heights in education or in their lives, that will help.
to better their lives and uh, uh, in in the future. And uh, I try also to be a role model. I try also to be a role model to the other village chiefs and even to the other members of the community. So it has been a long way, uh, a long, but today the community is accepting one by one. That's fantastic. Yeah. So you must be very proud of it. Now, um, just just going back a little bit, so can you explain to me what this is? Because um, when we filmed you doing some of the touring, you were talking about the different colours. Is it like the col colours of the rainbow or the different wow. tribes? Can you explain uh, it to me? Yeah, okay. These are my clothing, part of my clothing. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, like this one is my chief leadership stick. Right. And it's a symbol of power and authority for the chief. Is it so, got a name? Yeah, we call it a talking stick. The talking stick. Yeah, okay. a talking stick. Oh, and yeah. when I address uh, meetings, when I hold this one, I feel a lot of confidence. Right. And I, the words just comes out flowing mm. because I feel the energy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, these are typically Maasai colors. Mm -hmm. This, this, one, uh, this one has been done by Maasai women. And they are very skillful in making the artwork. And some of these colors, uh, to us, they have meanings. Okay. Like green, for us, the Maasai, stand for the grass. Yeah, nature. And the, yeah, and vegetation for our cattle. Okay. We are so much attached to nature. And Good. we love so much our environment. Mm -hmm. The color white stand for milk and peace. The color orange stand for the right setting of the sun. Right. The color blue for the Maasai stand for the sky, where we believe we came from. That is our story made of creation. Okay. We believe we came from the sky with all our belongings, the cows, the children, the women, all and right. everything. Okay. So, so is, what, what would you say, is that a religion or a philosophy? What, what, what would you say your religion is? That is a belief. It's a belief? It's a belief. Okay. Yeah, right. of how we came to exist. Wow, so okay. yeah, so that is our story, middle of creation, star, and yeah. we have the color yellow stand for warmth and beauty. Okay. We have the color red stand for briefness, courage, or even blood. Yes. So we have to yeah, we have, uh, as a warrior, yeah. uh, as a warrior, or a young man, we encourage our young men because we the the environment that we come is very hostile. We have all these wild cats. So we have to encourage our uh, young boys and, uh, to be very brave, to stand their ground whenever these wild animals come to attack the, sure. the, the livestock. So this cows. it's a matter of survival. With yeah, you. survival. Because a lot of people don't understand that. You know, a lot of people lobby against hurting animals. But for you, okay. you live. This is how you live, and you have to protect yourself. Yeah, because the animals are all everywhere. Yeah, they have to. We have to. We have to protect the cattle because the, the cattle means everything to us. Mm. And without cows, they are normal size. Mm. We have the color black, stand for the color of our skin. Okay. So that is my side colors. Okay, wow. this is my fly whisk. <laughs> yeah. Fly whisk. And it helps me to drive away flies. <laughs> okay. And this one is made from a giraffe tail. Oh, right. Okay. It's made from a giraffe tail. And this other, my clothing, my wife made for me. She had to do it skillfully, very well. She has to put <laughs> every, the beads and match them. Even this other cloth, she has to do everything of my bedwork. <laughs> My jewelry. This is a yes, special can you ornament. That to us? This is a special ornament, which is presented or given to a person who deserves respect or honor in my village. Okay. So, this is in the That's shape nice. of the hat, and oh. this one is made from a buffalo skin. Okay. So it's very special. Mm. And the color is again the, the same. Yeah. The, the, so they yeah, represent the same as the talking stick. Yeah, exactly. Same colors. Yeah. And this one is my chief gown. Right. Oh, for clothing. And this is very traditional. This one is made from a black and white Columbus monkey. Right. And at the back, it's made from a chimpanzee. Oh. So just to turn like that, you can see. You can see. That is how it is made. And that's so, how you, yeah. Yeah. And this is the black and white Columbus monkey. Sure. So this is, for, this is for the chief and it's for royalty. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing, and and uh, I mean the other thing you were talking about 
as well as uh, one of the traditions you uphold, uh, you're going against, is you are totally monogamous. You have one wife, and um, is there four daughters? You have yeah, four I have daughters? Four. And I some have, of them are adopted, you were saying, four children? Yeah, have uh, two girls and two boys. Okay. Yeah. And they're your own children? Yeah, they are my Because you did own. say you also adopted some girls yeah, from the I, village, is that I right? have four biological children. Mm -hmm. And I have one, uh, one adopted kid who uh, I was able to save from the harmful acts of female genital mutilation. And this girl was to be married off. So I took her, so because she was thrown away by her family, I took in. And now, uh, through the help of uh, well wishers, mm -hmm. I'm able to uh, support these girls through education. So, going back again to the tradition that you're doing everything you can to, to change about families uh, selling their, 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 their daughters, their little girls. Again, trying to get that across to, the, to Western society, um, that we can't even comprehend the poverty that a family would have to go through something like that. But I'm so grateful that you have the courage to stand up and say, no, we don't want to do this anymore. And um, so basically, um, you're going out there to say to everyone that you can sponsor a, a little girl. If you'd like to say that to the camera and yeah. tell people, how can they sponsor a little girl um, so that she doesn't have to be taken away from her family and married off at such a young age. And you see, all my work is done about is about mental health, is staying mentally well, mm -hmm. mentally well. Mm -hmm. And I believe that a child that's going to go through something like that will be shocked and, and will become mentally ill. There'll be too much shock for them to do it. So all my work is about protecting children because children become adults basically yeah. as you know yeah, they are, <laughs> and then they, they pass it on to their leaders, children yeah. they're the yeah. future yeah. so would you like to say to whoever's going to be watching this how can they sponsor a little girl and give her something to look forward to give her a life give her a future give her education and don't destroy her because quite honestly that's what's been happening yeah, yeah. i think uh, my prayer is to, as a leader, is to better the world more than how we found it, to make a better place for everyone to live. And even to the Maasai girls, we like to see them that they have a great opportunity in life whereby to grow as, uh, in good health and also to be people who are successful in life, in all spheres of life. So. And education is very important. So the way people can help is they can adapt uh, to sponsor a needy Maasai girl who is threatened, uh, who are education and future life is threatened by offering probably uh, a scholarship, uh, a small scholarship. And uh, just the little that you can do can go a long way changing uh, the lifestyle and impacting lifestyle in Africa. Mm. So even like for example, three hundred fifty dollars can help to put a rescued Maasai girl uh, to a, bo a body, an elementary or a primary school throughout the year for a whole uh, year. For a whole year. Mm -hmm. While around five hundred dollars will enable a high school girl to have a, a, a high school education for one year. So that right. is to cover the tuition, the, uh, the clothing. Uh, the body. So you're, yeah. in, so you're in a way that child can still stay with their family, or you, they'll be a, the family will be able to afford for that child to stay within the family, or would they go into uh, the orphanage or some kind of refuge where you would look after them? Yeah, one at the schools, they are boarding, they are boarding facilities, right. so this girl can be secure there, and I'll be there as a guardian. To keep a watch on these guards, so whenever they uh, they face some problems or threatens, I'm always there to stand with them. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Now, also, I just want to ask you a little bit about how you met Ginny, because Ginny Virginia Bartol, as we know, um, is is been doing everything to help the Chief Joseph and the Maasai to get the message across by touring all across 
particularly Port Jefferson and, and some of um, the areas around the area. So um, how did you end up coming to Port Jefferson? Because Ginny told me that you were walking up the hill or something happened and you met. Yeah. And then, would you like to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, uh, <laughs> we met with Ginny uh, when we were visiting Port Jefferson in New York. And we were walking just down the street to stretch up after our long flight, uh, because it's a very long flight. So we were stretching and walking al al along the street, and we just, when she was driving, she just bumped and saw us and said, Oh, are you Maasai? That's how she in the sounded. Of Port Jefferson, yeah, in the yeah. middle of Port Jefferson. <laughs> she was, uh, yeah, she was amazed to see. Yeah. Uh, the Maasai walking in the streets of Port Jefferson <laughs> and we, st we stood up uh, and we talked with her and we, we were glad that she was once time able to visit uh, the Maasai people of Kenya and Tanzania and she recognized us by the way we dressed. Okay. So that is how uh, and she took us to our house, she gave us some yeah. some orange juice like yeah <laughs> and we had a great conversation and from there that is how we our relationship started now she knew our she came to know our, about our course and what we are doing and that is how she was able to chip in and today she has grown to be a great uh, ambassador for my people oh, no. she's yeah. amazing yeah. so how many years have you been coming to port jefferson and doing these tours would you um, say I think this is around five years now. Five years? Yeah, every year, every year, every year. But sometimes it's very hard to travel because I have some work at the village and it's very expensive. Yeah, but they, they try to facilitate my coming, coming here. They do the best. Yeah. And, and arrange the programs too. Sure. And would you say that the, the awareness of the public is now growing for your cause? Oh, yeah. The, there are a lot of people who are uh, willing and looking forward to. They have a great interest in it, and we have we have been able to team up, and we are coming together as a family, as a communion way of doing things to try and uh, better the world or to make things a bit easier for us and for our people back at home. That's great. Well, we look forward to you coming to England. Because oh. England is a very multicultural country and you're going to be very welcome there. Oh, I would love and so much <laughs> if you can help in that to f expand our programs and to bring the message mm -hmm. that and the awareness to the people. So that is, will be something great I'll be looking for. for do, you, do you go to any other countries apart from America at the moment? I've, been able, to to, I've been able to travel to Swaziland and okay. South Africa. Mm -hmm. I've gone there to share more about our culture and also attending peace and resolution uh, conferences, meetings, yes. where I share about the, um, I shared about uh, the peace and resolution mechanism that we do in, uh, in Africa okay. among the Maasai people. So That's I've been really qu traveling quite uh, a little. So you spend a lot of your time traveling around getting support for this. Yeah, so yeah, exactly, right. exactly. What yeah. about the United Nations? I mean, surely there should be, or some kind of children organization like UNICEF or something like that. Do they help you in any way? Yeah, they try to help. I have heard about UNICEF, but this is a very big pro uh, organization mm. that uh, to meet all the needs of the villagers and communities uh, in Kenya, mm. uh, it's really not uh, easy. But it, it must because be, they sp yeah. specialize probably on sections. But right. we have uh, different communities, many of them. But I have never seen them uh, coming down to my village. Okay, because also you must, I mean, as you say, these are cultural traditions that have been going on for such a long time. So, do you have in place for young people, do you have educational programs to teach them about what you're doing actually in the Maasai itself? Yeah, every year, we, um, every year and every term, school term, when the kids are out of uh, school break, when they are mm -hmm. out of school break, or when they are in school break, we have a, a, an education workshop or seminar where we teach our 
young youth um, about uh, drug and abuse. We try to create awareness, uh, health impacts and the social impacts. Mm -hmm. We try also to teach the youth on career. Mm -hmm. We try also to teach them on uh, and give them guidance and counseling mm -hmm. and also create awareness of HIV AIDS. And we try also to share with them about gender equality. Yes. Yeah, gender equality. Okay. Yeah. And I just had another question because it was interesting. When we came here, you had a bit of a headache. Yeah. So this is going into another subject, which mm -hmm. I'm very interested in. Um, now, I'm, I advocate a lot of the time using only natural products and the mind to heal everything. That's mm -hmm. how I feel. So if you got a headache mm -hmm. in your when you were at home, mm -hmm. you wouldn't take Nurofen, would you? No, we don't what have What would either. you do? Yeah, at the village, I have some herbs that I can get from my immediate environment. Mm -hmm. I know some leaves, some berries, some back of trees, some roots I can run and get mm. in my immediate mm. environment. I can either boil them or um, I can maybe uh, put some to a container for some time for it to get um, uh, some syrup kind of. Sure. Then which I can drink or even I can just means that to uh, and it helps on, yeah. on my nerves on the yeah. head so yeah, it makes me do it or even I can in. smell smell sure. to take the, maybe the, the flowers or, and the leaves of some certain trees I can smell them to be able to mm. take the strong scent because we're going will, back to that a lot now yeah really? which will be able to heal my Fantastic, yeah, because I yeah. wanted to ask you that, particularly when I saw you jumping around so much energy, you and John, the way you jump around, you've got so much energy, and I was thinking you must really rely a lot on herbs and, and, and nature, and, do, and basically to, to stay well, because a lot of the Western world are coming down with lots of things, and you know, they don't have access to nature like you do, yeah, it's all yeah. around you. Yeah, it's very, quite uh, interesting and different because what we rely so much is about the, our environment back yeah. there. So it's not like uh, we don't have like the big stores or shops where we can run and buy all this. But yeah. we still live in our own uh, natural habitats that is in, in our lands where we don't have all these commercials. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and you have a guest house, so if people want to come and visit the Maasai, there is an actual, there is a guest house yeah. that you run, so the people can actually stay there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah through the help, uh, the help of well wishers, uh, well wishers and volunteers, we are able to put our guest house at the village, whereby we, we can uh, accommodate volunteers and people who like to come to the village to help, maybe teaching at the schools. Mm -hmm. and also maybe work within the community, maybe in the clinics or even with the women groups or, in to, part or to participate in development active, community development activities like building of our school or also those people who would like <coughs> to go for adventures or tour mm -hmm. safaris who would like okay. to visit the Maasai Mara. So we help to host these people. Okay, yeah. so do you offer programs for like young um, West, uh, young people that want to come from Western countries? Can they come for a certain amount of time, maybe work in the village and get to know the culture and everything and become like volunteers? Do you offer that? Yeah, we have those opportunities for students who like to take their summer holidays, maybe students who like to take their summer holidays maybe for one or two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have programs for them. And we have also for those who have completed high school and would like just to have a break before they join college or university. Mm -hmm. um, we have also for the, for the parents who like to just go and get, uh, do some ki kind of uh, uh, community service work or humanitarian helping that is to do in charity. Mm -hmm. We have all these uh, programs. Okay. So, and just, uh, so where do you go now? Where's, where are you going the next few days? Because you go back on Sunday. So where are you going to be going the next few days? Yeah, we had an invitation in Washington, D.C. to talk in with the American University students there. Okay. So we are looking forward to go there and mm -hmm. talk to them uh, before we return back home. That's fantastic. Now, if yeah. people want to 
get involved or sponsor a child or anything, do you have a website or how do they get in touch with you, Chief Joseph? What's the best way for people, if you want to literally say it to the camera, so yeah. we can put that underneath as well. So how do people get in touch with you? Yeah, they, they can, if people would like to get in touch with us, they, we have an email address, which is k-o-i-s-e-l-e -E at yahoo.com. Or how they can get all this our information from livingfootprints.org. Leave, leaving footprints. Yeah, living. living. Yeah, living. L e a v i n g. Thank you so yeah. much, Chief yeah, Joseph. Living. Yeah. I don't need to ask you to sing because I've got lots of that anyway from all the mm -hmm. touring that we've done yeah. and you've also explained what the singing was about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's lovely to meet oh, you. Oh, thank you so thank much. You so it much. was nice meeting you. <laughs> thank yeah. you. And okay. welcome to Africa. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's actually Thanks. beautiful out here today yeah. Yeah, for Jefferson. Today I've been interviewing Chief Joseph of the Maasai tribe and what an incredible man. What an incredible man. You see, on Moving on TV, we only put people that are going out of the way to make the world a better place. So next I'm going to be interviewing John, who goes on tour with you. I am interviewing uh, the Maasai tribe representatives. Uh, we talked to Chief Joseph and heard some incredible stuff about the tour and a bit of background. And now I have John. Uh, who's sitting here with me and John is part of the tour. So John, how did you get involved in the tour? I first got involved in the tour uh, back uh, three years ago uh, when I was attending the United Nations Teachers Peace uh, Conference, Education and Peace Conference. And uh, that is when I met uh, our host and the team that is coordinating activities for us uh, here in the U.S. Okay, okay. So you're part of the Maasai tribe, and uh, so basically, you did. Did you know Chief Joseph before? Well, you must have known him before, and all the work he's been doing for the Maasai. Is that right? Yes. Uh, I know Chief Joseph uh, since uh, yesterday. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, being a member of my community and at the same time a member of my village. Uh, back at home, I am a community social worker. Okay. And uh, that is why uh, what Chief Joseph is involved in is also uh, what I am doing back at home. So now mm -hmm. that uh, we have a common, a common objective, right. it's now when we came together so that we can uh, share ideas and see how best we can deliver to the mm. community. Because we were talking about how difficult it must be because of all the traditions, years and years and years of these traditions, and then you've come along with this revolutionary, positive, inspiring program to change lives of loads and loads of young women and children, you know, to create a better society. So can you speak a little bit about how you feel about that, about how does the old, the elders, how do they deal with your revolutionary ideas? Do you feel like you're battling against them in some way? Uh, I can't say whatever we are doing is not in our interest, but it is in the interest of the entire community. The children whom we are giving an opportunity to go to school are children from our community. These are children from very poor backgrounds, meaning that their parents are not able to send them to school. These are children who we feel education is a right. These are children who, whom we believe their parents do not understand the value of education. So this is, we are doing this for the interest of the entire Maasai community, not for our own interest. Of course. We know that mm. the end result of their education will be for the benefit for even for their own individual families. Mm. So mm. Uh, having uh, gone to school, I have learned the body of education and I now want the entire Maasai community 
also to know on the body of education. And that is why we are say, helping them send the kids to school. Uh, because now the, the, the Maasai community, having been a community that entirely relied on pastoralism or livestock for their livelihood, we feel that now the community livelihood is endangered because of climate change that is coming out about with persisting droughts. Of uh, course, yeah. And therefore, the livestock are dying. And therefore, there is need now as a community to look for an alternative source of livelihood. Mm. And the only sustainable source of livelihood is if you give children an education. Sure, of course, you have to start from the basics. Because you did mention about the droughts quite a lot through the tour. So how, what are you able to do to help yourself with that? Uh, regarding the drought, at the moment uh, it is just a matter of looking for uh, how we can come in to help the community in terms of providing relief services, I mean relief food, both to the human and livestock population. Meaning uh, we are looking on ways to provide relief food in form of corn, maize flour, cooking oil. And also at the same time, trying to look for ways of getting hay and feeds to their livestock. Mm -hmm. and, uh, if, and if possible, even uh, provide for water because uh, the, the, doubt, the drought is hunger and, star and starving. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is something that at the moment my community is going through. Sure. So what, can, what else can we do as a humanitarian TV station? What else can we do for you to help? I mean, if you want to say it to the camera, to the people that are going to be watching, how more can we help you? What else can we do to support you, do you think? Actually, uh, our major objective of this tour is to, re to improve the living standards of the most poorest community members. This can be achieved by a drilling of wells, giving children an education, I mean putting on food security measures within the community. You know, it is not possible to send kids to school with an hungry soul. It's not possible to go and uh, advocate for the human rights we are talking about to hungry people. So I think what you first need to do is to build the security, the food security of the said people. And then thereafter is when you can be in a position to talk about other issues. Sure. So, so there's water, lots of issues. So water is very important in the Maasai community. The schools are very important in the Maasai community. And even the health facilities like the dispensaries are also very important in the Maasai community. Like for example, there is need for ambulances in our community because sometimes someone may, might feel sick, might fall sick mm. and you are not in a position maybe to transport that person to the hospital, wherever the hospital is. So along the way that person dies because some people try to carry their uh, sick people using their backs. Some use donkeys to carry. So along the way people die while they are trying to access medical facilities. So even Don't an ambulance, clue, really. yeah, an ambulance is also very, very important in the Muslim community. Right. So, do you feel that going around the tours that you're doing is increasing awareness? Are you getting the support that you need? Are you, how do you feel about that? Yes, at some point uh, we are making uh, progress because at the moment we are able to send a few girls to school. We are uh, at the moment able also to help some boys get education. So uh, I believe that of, uh, out of our own uh, evaluations, we have been the, the positive side of us mm. traveling to go and meet different people outside the world. Because uh, sometimes uh, problems get solutions when you share with people about the problems that you go through. Mm. It's not that people are not willing to help. Sometimes people don't know what challenges or what well, problems you are going through. They don't know. So, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Is we don't, we so, didn't know about yeah. your work. 
we didn't know that, you know, there's, nobody knew about Chief Joseph and all the positive work that's being done. If you look at comments on Facebook, people are pretty ignorant mm -hmm. about your work. And so I'm very grateful to be able to tell it, to be able to say, look, look at all the amazing work you're doing. But just coming back to you um, a second, you, because you had obviously had a really good education to be able to do social work. You must have had a really good education. So were you sponsored by someone or how did that happen? Actually what happened uh, is that uh, the community came together. They pulled resources and they sent me now to school. Wow. Okay. And uh, having been a, being a product of the efforts of the community, it's my turn also now to give them back to the community. Back. And the yes. only way, the best way that I can give back to the community is trying the best as I can to give Maasai children education, to seek for scholarship, to seek for opportunities to the Maasai children. Mm. Yes. So that is why I, am, I, I, I have been challenged and uh, I am passionate about what I do. Mm. So you're doing an amazing job and your wife's just about to have a boy, is that right? You're going to have a baby? Yeah. On the, uh, right, okay. So do you have any other children? Is this your first child? No, I am a father of three sons. You've got three sons already? Yes. Wow, and okay. All, and all in school. And they're all in school? Yes. Fantastic. And so you're probably very tired. I can see you're very tired. It's been a very long tour and you've been continuously, you know, going around and doing what you do. Um, so when you get back, you probably need to rest for a little while, get your energy back. <laughs> I don't and, really uh, think there is time for me to go and rest. <laughs> mm. uh, there is a lot that is waiting for me. Mm. Uh, the community is expectant. They expect to hear from me. There are so many people and so many children who need scholarships. Yeah. And uh, when they heard that I was coming to the U.S., so many sent me with uh, uh, applications mm. for, sp for sponsorship opportunities. Right. So as soon as I get back, I will go and sit with those families and discuss with them, share with them the opportunities that have come along our, our tour, see how we can share the little mm. resources that we'll be able to raise through the tour right. to make sure that the community have benefited from my services. Again, uh, you know, we, at the moment, because the community is going through a very hard time because of the drought, there is very little time that I have to go and rest. So resting <laughs> to me you is, can rest this evening. is like a vocabulary. <laughs> You're in Port Jefferson. Gee, we're in a really nice place. You can hear the birds. It's lovely here, mm -hmm. being outdoors and being able to talk to you. So thank you so much, John. Thank you for all the amazing work you're doing with Chief Joseph. And uh, hope everything goes okay with your wife and, you know, that everything's all right with the ba new baby. And um, keep in touch with us. Uh, as I say, we'll do whatever we can to send out the message as much as we can and um you know and look forward to hearing great results so yeah. thank you so much thank you, take you so care. much for giving me this opportunity you're welcome you're welcome thank you john thank take you. care an amazing fabulous interview with chief joseph and uh, john from the tour the maasai tour i'm signing off here on moving on tv we cannot we cannot grasp how people live how the Maasai tribe survive. We cannot grasp how it is to not have water, to not have food, to be so poor that you cannot educate your children or that you have to, in a way, sell your children because you're so poor. We cannot grasp what these people are going through. And we are so grateful to visionaries and amazing leaders that we've just seen that have the courage to stand up and say, we don't want this anymore. We want our children to have more. We want them to be educated. So we're asking you, do whatever you can. Christmas is coming along, the perfect timing. For the cost of two presents, you could sponsor a little girl 
I think it's about £300, maybe a bit less. You can sponsor a little girl for a whole year to go to school, to have an education, to not need to be married out. And what I believe that if this child is put into a situation like that, she will become mentally ill. It is not a natural thing to do. So that's what I'm asking is go on the Maasai Tribe website, check everything out and look inside. Do you really need those toys that are going to be thrown in the bin in January? Think about it. In January, you will have saved a life. You are the only God who is able to do what you did to Anna, giving the child at an older age. So it's just a song that we're praising God to give God all the glory and all the honor of all the good things that He has done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So there is a lot of variation uh, <coughs> in, in, uh, in the years of going to school. So from the elementary school, which is primary, from class one to class eight, even in the first year, I, I had a boy who is in class, uh, which is in which he was who was in kindergarten, and this boy is 13 years old. So, because of the cultural, uh, the Maasai cultural uh, tra and traditions and cultural practices, this boy was not given an opportunity to go to school. Wow. He had to go and attend his father's cows and goats and be a shepherd. So, most of his early years, he wasted, he are uh, wasted, and these are the kids that we are, we are trying to rescue. Yes, so that they can yes, get out yes. to go to school. Mm. And also the girls, they are not given equal opportunities to go to school because uh, of the same things, the bad Maasai cultural uh, traditions and cultural practices. You can meet a Maasai girl who is either of her teenage years and she might be in grade two or three. Or either she's just starting grade one. So by the time even these girls try to go to to grade eight, might be because of maybe the cultural practices. Not many of them make to grade eight because one they are either they undergo family special agricultural marriage, female FGM or female gentle cutting yes. and then which which the which uh, the the Maasai people when they when the, the girl undergoes that practice she stay, she is implanted in her mind that she is mature now to be married. So the father is to the father's interest that this girl is married off so that to add the family or the father a uh, wealth in form of cows, goats, because that is what the father gets in dowry. So the girl is treated as an asset. So there is a lot of variation in age. So there is that difference. Maybe another thing just to add on what Chief Joseph has said. Am I audible enough? No, just so, use this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sure. It's on, it's on. So, okay. So uh, sometimes. Uh, in some villages, there are no schools. So, uh, the fact that there are no schools denies children an opportunity to go to school. Mm -hmm. So, and that is why you can see there are some villages whereby we are putting preschools. Mm -hmm. So that children at a tender age can be able to go to school. Because some schools might be about six miles away, eight miles away, and a kid of four, five years cannot be able to walk six miles. Yeah. And along the way, can come in contact with wild animals like the lions and all that. So sometimes it is the distance to school that denies children an opportunity to go to school. Another thing is even some Maasai families do not know the value of education. Right. So they even, you know, education was introduced to Kenya by the missionaries. 
So even some families take education to be a borrowed idea, uh, which means that it, they are going to mislead the children to run away from their website. Joseph, I just wanted to ask you something because we're promoting the sponsorship program. What does it actually mean if someone sponsors um, a little girl? Do they have contact? Do they get letters or photographs from that child? Or how does it work? The sponsors uh, will be able to get photographs of the girls and uh, an annual uh, letter, a Christmas uh, card or letter from the girl themselves. Okay, so there is some kind of contact that they can actually get to know that child a little bit because they're likely to want to sponsor them another year because oh, yeah. it's more yeah. personal isn't yeah. it? You go over there and I encourage every person sitting in this room to go visit and if you see the love in these people's eyes and if you see the, the behavior and the respect in their children I, I just I don't know what else to say uh, we've been fortunate enough to be able to visit a few times and when I come home I just want to take my grandchildren, <laughs> put them on an airplane, and send them to just send them to the village for a week, two weeks, one night. <laughs> this is a surprise for you this evening, and that is that we have a couple from the UK who have come especially to. Meet the Maasai and to visit you here at the House of Judah. And uh, our friends, um, Lauren Hope, and that's Lauren with an E, and her husband Martin have come all the way from UK. And Lauren is going to treat us to a song. That's beautiful. She is beautiful. I'm going to make sure I don't forget anything here. She's the founder of Moving On TV. Moving on theater, and she's also the director of social media at WMAP Radio, which is right here out of Port Jefferson. And also check out WMAP Radio because that stands for World's Most Amazing People. And I want you to know that your pastor and your lady here are, we all know, among the world's most uh, amazing people and they have been interviewed and I think the station is going to feature that interview all this week um, for, you know, just because they are, they, that's, that's who they are. So, so let me get, uh, let me get Lauren up here. She, again, she's the founder of, uh, of Moving on TV, so she has, and this is out of the UK, so she has a television station there, she works with the radio station WMAP here, and she's a great advocate for mental health. Oh, so this so is, nice. um, this lady is beautiful inside and out. She, she is a person who is so filled with love and so full of compassion and kindness and she has dedicated her life to helping people with any sort of mental challenges in particular those with borderline personality disorder. That's her, that's her thing here. She's amazing. So because I've talked too long already, I'm going to um, introduce Lauren. She's going to sing you a beautiful song which she wrote. And uh, she was inspired the song um, after 9-11. It's called, I Wish You Peace every race and creed and color. And it's about global unity. Right? <laughs> right? Interfaith, peace, bringing us all together, no matter who we are. I'm Jewish, well, I, I grew up in Israel, um, but I, um, I believe that we're all the same. Um, we're all here to make the world a better place. So I wrote the song to bring us all together. And if you go on movingontv.uk, which is my TV channel, you can watch the film with a thousand children from where we live in England, all singing for peace. Oh, and um, it's like Casey's station, we're our most amazing people, my station Moving On TV or a YouTube Moving On TV community. You'll find all my programs. I do it to make people happy. Instead of listening to the news and getting unhappy and depressed, I healed my uh, mental illness 
without medication. with the Maasai, and I want to thank uh, Lauren Hope. Uh, how'd you like that soprano that opened up today? Beautiful, right? Okay, and, oh, and I want to thank Ron for his sponsorship of, uh... Well, we did the, we did the older sister, so we wanted... Yeah, sister, yeah, yeah, we got it. Um, well, we had sponsored uh, one of the girls through, uh, through high school, and so Ron has volunteered to uh, now support her younger sister. We, we, visited the mom. we visited the mom, and um, I don't want to make the program go too long, but I want to tell you about our experience. Uh, the girl that we sponsored was in school, happily, so we stopped to say hello to the mother. Uh, the chief took us there. The mom is a widow. She has four children. She lives in a Boma which is the Maasai, typical Maasai home, which is like a, a, like a hut. Um, and uh, so she's got... she's got dung and mud so, with uh, sticks to hold it together. Right. So she, she is a widow. She has three children at home. I, I think two of the boys were out uh, with the herds. And then it was another little toddler. Uh, she had a newborn, actually, at the time, or a, or a very small child. But this woman was living in such poverty 
She cannot feed her family. And I could then understand how you would take your oldest daughter and accept some cows, or some sugar, or some blankets to send your oldest daughter out where you know she's going to be fed, she's going to be taken <coughs> care of, and you would then be able to feed the, the younger ones, you know, for a little while. I Then I got it. I, I understood how you could do that because other than that, I can't imagine. I can't imagine the heartache. But uh, this woman invited us in. She was delighted to see us. And one of the most touching things that's happened to me in my entire life, she made us a cup of tea. She has, when I say nothing, I don't know where she got the tea from. She was able to find some sugar to put in the tea. And, uh, I mean, even water. It's just... Really, I, I can't even... Nothing, you know. And that she, she sacrificed what little she had for us out of a sense of gratitude, hospitality, all of that was very, very touching. So, at any rate, you had one thing you would say? Uh, yes, um, I'd like to reiterate on that one thing about she had nothing. And I, when we say nothing, she had nothing. Uh, Judy and I uh, gave Chief Joseph some money to uh, bring some supplies to Obama that lasted two months. Mm. Uh, there's not an American child that I know that could spend five hours or six hours there without screaming bloody murder for mommy to go home. Mm. And it's the most incredible place you'll ever see little kids grow up. The respect, mm -hmm. the gratitude, mm -hmm. the, the outpour for, for anybody that's older than they are is just amazing. I mean, truly, truly amazing. So we... Uh, so, Ginny, what was the main aspects about the, the tour with um, Chief uh, Joseph and John? What did you feel was achieved by the Maasai tour? Oh, Martin, it was a very full week. It was a draining week. It was a fabulous week. Um, I just love those guys when they come in. I call them the boys. I love the boys when they come and visit. But it is a whirlwind. And at the end of the day, I would say we made a lot of money for them to take back to their, to their village. We're going to feed a lot of hungry people. We're going to get some feed for the cattle that they can't drive to greenery because there is no greenery after almost two years with no rain. We have rescued some girls that uh, we're going to put into a safe house. There are a bunch of uh, 10 to 12 year old girls who would be getting married very shortly and going out of their village with older men that they've never met before to become their wives and raise a brood of children who instead have scholarships to school thanks to people like yourself who yourself and your wife are sponsoring one girl in high school which we're so grateful for. So. There are a lot of people here in New York that have a new respect and understanding, I think, for them. It's a very important part of their trip. They, are, um, they explain the culture. There are a lot of people here. I even saw the word savages one time used on the internet on a, on a message. And it's so unfair. We have so much to learn from the Maasai culture. There's so much love there. There's such a sense of community there. And there, there's just such a sense of caring, respect for the elders, and value on education. There's so many wonderful things that we can learn from the Maasai, as well as their history. So they were able, in this one short week, to share their culture with many people, and in return, to be able to help their village uh, in immeasurable ways. People here have literally saved lives in this island this week, so I'm feeling pretty good about Thank it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. And to Lauren, uh, both of you moving on TV, I thank you so much for your, for your interest. And, uh, and it was good to find out about uh, uh, a tribe that I've really, to be honest with you, I've had not an awful lot of interest in, but I've certainly got an interest in now. And it certainly teach, taught me and it's taught a lot of people, I think, uh, of, of different cultures.
and how more can be done uh, by just by a, a, a nominal amount by our standards to help them uh, lead a, 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 a life that we take for granted. And, so do you feel different now than you felt when you first I, came yes, on the tour? Of course. I mean, you, you can't, you know, you can't not be moved by some of the plight of these people and some of the stories you hear. Uh, we live in our world, we have our problems, um, and they are problems. They live in their world and their problems are <laughs> their problems. So um, it is a compare and contrast and uh, it's just good to know that we can help somebody and others we can help them with uh, just a, 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 the smallest effort we can help them. Thank you.